Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, sorry, 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 man. I'm running the time, man. <laughs> Good morning. Hallelujah, praise God. Um, I know you are on time. We should have commenced at 11 a.m. I'm still looking to see uh, certain family members, uh, such as son, daughter. I haven't seen them yet. So I'm going to ask you to be a little more patient and um, let's give them another five minutes or so. I know that it 
is because of this, because of Paul, because of Ricky, because of others of the family members, why many of you are here. Amen? Amen. You could have been otherwise minded. Some of you, you have taken the time out from work, from your busy schedule to be here. So I just want to say welcome to everyone of you this morning. Most of all, I can't, but I have to welcome the Holy Spirit of God in our midst. Amen? Amen. Amen, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. You see, without God, we are nothing. Without God, we are dead. Without God, we can't talk, we can't walk, we can't do anything. So we have to be grateful to God that He is among us right now. Uh, have with me on the platform, Reverend King is the pastor of the Norwood Wesleyan Holiness Church. He's also a co worker along with Victor, who work for the same company. And so he and others are here this morning to show their respect. Amen. And so we are. Happy to have you with us. Our moderator will be Sister Karen Grant, Bernard Grant. She will be guiding us as we go through um, the proceeding. I know that my Redeemer liveth, that he shall stand at the lot of day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, my eyes shall behold and not another. God is our refuge and strength of every present help in trouble. Therefore will therefore will not be feared, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters bear of war and be drunk, though the mountain shake with the swelling thereof. Jesus declared, he said, Verily, verily I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. The day that he shall hear. He also said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He praise God. I now ask Sister Grant to come and guide us to the procedure. There are some instructions that she will pass out. Good morning, everyone. How are you? And I'm sure you're wondering why. A number of persons here do know me, right? Yes. Thank you. And does anyone know my first name? My first thing. Say the name. Nature does call, and as I can see some of 
you can. Nature does call and there are times that you have to run out. So we actually make preparations that you can go down. Walk that way, so that we're up here on the other side. Take that little gate there. You go right down and you make a sharp right. Okay? And as you make the right, on your left, there are some rooms there for the ladies. Sharp left, there's a washroom there for the men. Okay? So you can. Oh, I'm going to ask you to keep it on vibrate. But if it's possible, turn it off. You know, I'm smiling because I don't even let mine turn off. <laughs> but I'll ensure that it's off. Another thing, you're coming here to do your, play your part in the funeral. The last time I said, we don't want the kids keeping up here from the ladies. So you must be properly attired when you're coming up here. And if any young man, because no old man now will do that, hands gonna be down here, and you're coming up. Here, pull it up, or I'm going to make you do what you have to do. Right? We're still in the house of God. So ensure that you're properly attired. When you finish, you can go back and take out your clothes. But coming up to the baritone, where's the holiness? That's how we do it in the sanctuary. And finally, I know the time is hot. There's no AC. But you have to drink your water. But when you finish, when you're through, take the bottles with you. And sometimes I know the children are going to want their snacks. Don't litter, please, when they're through. Put the bags and possibly the boxes from their box juices. All right? Yes. Thank you. May I hurt them a feeling? We're going to begin. The hymn on the program, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And I'm going to ask you to change your positions as we do this number. Great is Thy Faithfulness. Please stand.
to the open prayer. Hallelujah. Can we praise the Lord? Come on, somebody. Give God a praise in the house. We're going to be to God. In spite of our feelings, we're here to say goodbye to a wonderful worker. Somebody I love very much. Um, Victor, full of manners. <laughs> Always saying, Sir King. Always to be my great grandfather. He's good to be my grandfather. Um, let us pray. Great is thy faithfulness. There is no shadow of turning in me, no change in not, my compassion is in not, as thou art been, thou art never. Your faithfulness will never change. From everlasting to everlasting, you still remain, Lord. You promise, O oh God, that Father, in the life you will meet us, and also in death. We thank you, Lord, that Father, we can live at that assurance today, that you are in our midst this today, God, and you're taking stuff of what is about to happen. Father, we present, O oh God, this service in your hand. O oh God, we pray, God, that every era, O oh God, of history, O oh God, Father, as present, as the word will be read, as the word will be delivered, O oh God, Father, someone, O oh God, will be convicted and come and accept you as Lord and Master of your lives. We pray for today's proceeding. Oh God, take it out of man's hand. Let it be in your hand. We pray, oh God, for the family of God. Good morning to be God. Let them understand that death is a must. So give, oh God, Father, we embrace today, God, as one, as we written, oh God, and this program, a thanksgiving service. We thank you for the life of my Peter. Oh God, Father, we pray an integral role in many of us' lives. One of God's Father given instruction for us the warmness of God of him around us. We appreciate you, appreciate the fact, oh God, that you have lent him to us. Oh God, uh, today God is here, oh God, to take him out of this world. Help us to understand that there is going to be a great resurrection hall, where the trump shall be sound, and time shall be no more. The dead in Christ shall arise, and they that remain shall part of the day with you. Help us to understand that we hope to represent them, O oh Father, and therefore God will be the book of life. If we, our name, are found in the book of life, we are promised, O oh God, that you will be with us to eternity. Bless, keep us, O oh God, until you come in, and we come to worship you and to praise you in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ and the
in their day. So all human beings are interacting with him. Forging bonds that extend far beyond the boundaries of the crown. Victor has had a very pleasant personality that radiates through every physical presence. Oh. 
Listening to everyone and following their thoughts. 
Yes, he opened his eyes and was enjoying the moment with his visiting friends and expressed joy in seeing us. We shared a short devotion and I encouraged him to think on things positive. Thanking him for being the kind and gentle person he was and bidding farewell. He smiled and closed his eyes again. Consciously waiting, waiting, waiting patiently for that moment. It was a pleasant experience see a man keeping his composure in the face of death. The club of life is wrong but wants. No man has the power to help just when the hands would stop. Be it late or early hour, now is the time we own to live God's word and be truly human. should not place no faith in tomorrow, for the clock may then be safe. Rest in peace, Mass Victor. Your memory will be long to live in the hearts of families and friends. Sleep on my friend, my brother, and take your rest. God bless you all.
is one of the art. I've been doing yoga, you remember I was produced and all these things all my life. But this is the artist I have to do uh, for my car. Vegas, um, we say Papa Victor. Papa Victor is not just my father or our father, because I'm presenting all of this. He was a brother because he took his very young, so he treats us like we are his peers. Um, one of the best fathers anybody could have asked for. Because as old as I am, yes, I am old. I could go to him at any time for anything. And if I dare offer him anything, he would say, give it to your children. You give it to them, we don't, we don't want it. The children need it for the night. The love for our father is the love forever that we remember. Even as I speak his words, rips me apart. Come to the fact that you're gone. I see your smile between the reality, my father, my friend, have a thing. It told us what it really means to not just be a father, but a friend, a motivator. What it really means to live a great life, and what it really means to be truly loved, and will be deeply missed. I am still lost for words, Bobby. Jaja. Those. I'll embrace our talks, our laughters, our hugs forever. We love and appreciate you always. I can remember as a child, as I read through uh, Susie, Vicky, and myself, we journeyed from Rosehill to Goodwill your early childhood education. So, and he was a bike rider. You could see me and Susie every morning at the back of the bike. Susie would be in the middle, and I would be behind Susie. Yes, son, I see you waving. Yes, I see you waving. And you take us to Goodwill, and it's five and a half miles back and forth. And I can remember many mornings when we get to school, and Mr. Boeing was under the straw. And he would stop my dad and say, what's going on? My dad said, boy, teach the plug, the plug, the plug. <laughs> so we, then morning, all the other kids would be getting, you know, distracting, but we would escape because we were on the back of the bike. My brother was a little more fortunate. He stayed in Kent with my dad, so he was close to the school, so he didn't have to endure the lateness and all that. My dad was very, very strict. And he has a loud mouth. He didn't have to beat us. In you know, order to listen and obey what he said. When he opens his mouth, we start crying. We didn't have to get any strapping. And the only child that got a beat from my dad was Susie. Because she was a stubborn one. He didn't want to feed the boats, he didn't want to feed the water, so she got a beat him. And that was it for us. Ricky. The way my dad was so strict, he would drive, he would drive the chocolate from Kenny Rose on weekends. Every weekend, he would come up and visit. And uh, Ricky was on the chocolate going back to Kenny with him from Rose and he was falling asleep. And my dad stopped the chocolate and said he would get off. And that poor child, he was a child then, had to run behind the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and he went to a certain place where he thinks he was awake enough to come back on it. Say, oh, you want to go and send that person? Yes. When you talk about it, you're going to do So, you know, he was really strict, but he really, really loved us. And when I needed a good laugh, and I called him on the phone, and I said, what well, now, man? He said, what, well, baby girl? And he said, you know, what's happening? What do you mean? I'm going to He said, okay, so what's going on? And the story begins, and everything that happened, I can tell you. And you'll stay there for hours. And I'm really, really going to miss that. We're going to miss that. We're going to miss that. But Papa Vic, you 
live your course. You've lived a good life. You've lived a good life. And yes, as it said in uh, Ms. Dawson's Lord of Remembrance, he worked at Kent since he was 15 years old. So all his life, that's where we were, that's where we were, stayed, that was his life. Kent was his life. Um, it's one thing that I know for sure he would want me to do this evening. Because that was one thing he was very proud of me for. I, I could sing at once. I don't know if I can anymore because I really don't sing. But I'm going to try and do just one verse of this song. Because I know he would really, really love for me to do this.
to prepare your heart that even at a funeral service, if you are not yet saved, when you leave here today, you can say to someone, you know, I've met with the Lord. He has done it for me. So the servant of God, as I said, is no stranger. He's the pastor of his church, Reverend Ian Kingsley Parkinson. Yes, he's married two children and one grandchild. And his flock supports and loves him. I'm a part of the flock. And you know, he's going to come today with the undiluted word that God has given him. So open your hearts and just help me. Put your hands together and welcome the man of God. Welcome to
I would like to recognize and extend my condolences to the family. See some of them sitting in the front. Victor loved his family. Whenever he's missing from Kent, he would be at his home with his family. The only time I can find him as Kent has become his home would be when he's at Rose Hill with his family. Two girls, a boy, and his wife. Today, today, Victor has gone ahead of us. I don't want us to think for a minute that our time is not just a lonely time. It's the road we all will have to drive. And ladies and gentlemen, it's for you to make your calling and make some sure. Victor is already gone. We're celebrating his past. We'll miss him. We'll always wish that he could be with us again. But that's all we will ever have, a memory of a good man. And he was a good man. Victor worked at Kent, a farm. And he did not just work at Kent. Victor was Kent. <laughs> Seven years. Four owners. Spent 37 years. He worked for Dennis Moore. I walked into the church when somebody said, after 37 years, we <laughs> should be shareholding. Shareholding means nothing. Ken was Victor. Ken was Victor. We had four bushes at Ken. And Victor might be the last in a series of great cowboys. No cattle, no cow, no bull. Put out one Victor. He gets on his horse, and that's it, it's over. You're done. Cow is fast and on the ground. Many of us love to watch Cowboy movies. Yeah? But Victor was a real thing. <laughs> real thing. I was not supposed to be at the service. But I got up this morning. What I got? A neighbor. Very close friend is also very big, as I see. And I reflect. Where should I go this time? And the spirit led me to this place. I got lost three times. <laughs> I ended up closer to where he was buried, and then I had to come here. But the Spirit wanted me to be at this place. 
andare un breve un attimo di vita.
You never eat enough food. Back then, my name was not known to many people as in the party. My name was Odious Cornelius. And the alias came to Odious Cornelius called Slave. And it was Victor that gave me that name, Slave. A name that my mother hated so much. And every time he heard anybody, a brother slave, my mother groaned. <laughs> Victor, not only you go by the name of Victor, but his name was Zaka. Some of you don't know, we call him Zaka. Yes? Um, we call him Moses. All right, that's when some of his areas came, Moses. But like what Mr. Margaret said, when it comes to animals, we also call him the trainer. There is no doubt in our new in our hearts that our come, doesn't care why they are, but um, Victor will get them to be tamed where anybody can operate them. Victor has his purpose, he has fulfilled, but this afternoon, Victor is not here. There's a beautiful casket on the outside here with a body in it. That's the remains of Victor. Victor is not in that casket. Victor is somewhere where you and I have never been before. One of these days, we will go here. It depends on the choice that we make. That we are ever in here. That one day, we too might end up in here. Amen? Hallelujah. The word of the Lord coming to us from the book of St. Luke. St. Luke, chapter 16. It is a well-known story that we have in the Bible. This was directed by Jesus Christ himself. He spoke these words. And Luke put pen to paper and wrote them so that we could have them. The story of two men that Jesus made mention. St. Luke 16. You can see from verse 19. Now I'm not going to read it through. But many of us been old, and so as the Holy Spirit would have wanted me to share from it, that I will do. Go ahead to me as you do. Oh Father and oh God, we are grateful to you for this wonderful day that you have made. We are thankful to you that you have spared our lives. Thank you that you woke us up this morning when we would have gone to sleep last night, not knowing what next. But God, you spare our lives. And you have clothed us in the right mind. You have brought us all into the sanctuary today. Because of what you have given to us. And you have taken me. Lord, we are here to celebrate this life. We are here to show our great concern or respect for the life that we have given. We thank you, God, for this congregation. We ask, Lord, that you will speak to every heart. Because, Lord, we need to hear from you. We are many people, God, who rebel against you. But we ask right now, Father, that you will grow the veil. You will dismantle the yoke and grant that God, the hearts of your people, will become soft. So that, Lord, your word will penetrate and will take great Hallelujah. Jesus. Please, God. Let your word sink deep into the heart of your people. And bring us to the place of where we will recognize you that you are God. And we are to serve. Lord, use your servant. Let the anointing flow. Let only what you want your people to hear from, from my mouth. 
Let the word of my mouth and meditation of my heart let be accepted in your sight. I ask these in Jesus' name. The church say amen. amen. Praise God. I want you to know that in this sanctuary, whenever time we come here to worship, we worship. For whatever occasion, we give praises. We give thanks. Amen. amen. We make joyful noise unto the Lord. So don't be afraid to say amen. amen. Don't be afraid to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you preach with me, then I guarantee you, you won't spend more than 15 minutes.
The dog saw it and think maybe it is something that could bring satisfaction to death. But pity the dogs did not know that what they were doing in licking the sore of this sick sore man that they were giving him comfort. Oh, hallelujah. I said it from this platform before that I have an encounter with God licking my soul. I have an encounter. Standing, waiting, as I was thirsty, like this poor man Lazarus, waiting for a drink of water, coming from school. I have a soul and my uncle, because as I said it over and over, and when growing up, I have what you call bountiful. More than. And uh, every time I walk, my two uncles will start to eat. And I always have a soul. While I was here, I experienced a little puppy came and started to lick the soul. Once the puppy was licking the soul, my God, it feels so good I didn't drive the puppy away. <laughs> I just stand there and let the puppy keep licking my shoes. I say this to say, I believe while the dogs were licking Lazarus sword, he was enjoying it. It seems to me there was a comfort. But the Bible, as I go on quickly, the Bible said, there is something that is common to every man. Nice. Something that is common to every man. Whether you're rich or you're poor. Whether you're white or black. Let me say you're white. Oh, 
Bible said, after the poor man died and was carried, the rich man died. The rich man died. I want to see, brothers and sisters, that when Lazarus died, when we call the rich man dying, the diabetes means wealth. Someone that is rich. I want to believe that when Lazarus died and is remained removed from wherever, if he died at his feet, that he would have said, Happy Rhythm. Get rid of him now. When my friends, when, 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 when my, my, my big, big deterrents are coming to visit me, yes, and we are going to have our parties. Ah, the story, story, man will not be here anymore for them to come and question me why you have that sore uh, beggar out there interrupting us when we are coming in. Come on. He said, all of that is over. Amen. So he said, I can live now. The Bible said he died. After he died, the Bible said he was buried. When you talk about burying something, you're talking about something that you don't want to take more. It's done away with. You dig a hole and you bury it and you cover it and you say, yes, it's done with. Good for nothing. The man, the rich man, died and he was buried. What? This is said, brothers and sisters, that he went to a place of That's right. Amen. A place of no return. He was buried. He's completely finished. Hallelujah. In the physical. And also, I would say the spiritual. Because though a man, come on, search of the living God, the soul of man never died. The soul of man lives on for eternity. So when this rich man, he said his, he was buried, it means his soul went to, the, went to the place of where it belongs. Oh, glory to God. Amen, church. When a man dies, when you die, what next? What next? For you and I today, when one dies, when Victor died, when the breath leave his body, you know what happened next? They called for the people from their funeral home and they take the body to the mall. Come on, sir. They don't want to have the body lying down in the house. So when a man died, what then? Your body goes to the mall. Oh, glory to God. And they put you in a fridge. Yes. And they give me as long as the rather family members want them to keep you there, to keep the money there. And then what next? What next? After the bar, brothers and sisters, you find a day of internment. When that body will place in a casket like this. And the body will even come to the sanctuary and be viewed by everybody. And everybody wants to take a last look. I have to see Victor in the dark. But let me tell you, I'm a Victor now. You're not looking at Victor. What you see here is dust. Dust. That's what God made him from the dust. And it's return going back to the dust. Amen, sir. The real victor is not here. The very real victor is somewhere. I don't know. But I learned that there are two places where man is going to spend their eternity. Two places you can only spend it at one. Come on, sir. It's either with God in that place that Jesus God to appear or with the devil in the bottomless. Where will you want to stay your eternity? After you die, what next? Take me to the church and oh my God, some people come and they talk. We never hear the talk. But Paul, if you were good, the talk that um, most Victor would have allowed Ricky to get off the drop. 
doctor. I may be wrong by the inscribing. Look at my way. Yes. Some people, they wouldn't talk that. When we come to church, people talk all the good about the person. Yes, yes. All the good. And sometimes we make up some things. Yes, sir. I mean, because we don't want these people to, 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 to look down at us and, you know, I us to feel embarrassed. And we say, oh, he was a good father. He take care of the children when some of them, they didn't even get to lunch one. <laughs> the best man in the community because he look out for the people which are all the good things. But after all of that, we sing lovely songs, preach a preach, and then take them to the cemetery. Come on, church. Come on, die one minute. Then we finally bury them. We say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Hallelujah. We commit the body to the ground. But what next? What next? Well, Pastor, what kind of question are you asking me? What next? Am I dead in my bed? So what next? In death, are we buried in? It's all over. I want you to understand, people. It's not over. It's not over until God takes over. And the Bible tells me that the soul that sinners shall surely die. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. And every man is going to be paid for the life they live. Amen. Amen. Come on. You said for the world to do for the life they live. Amen. If you live a life that is contrary to the will of God, listen to people, you are going to be paid for it. Oh, yes. None of us is going to go unpunished. Hallelujah. So what that is very we think Victor is God. But listen to me. What next? You have the place of eternity. You see, the soul of man, as I said before, never die. That's why, brothers and sisters, we got to pay attention and know who we are. That we are not animals. We are not like cats and dogs. We are not like the heads. Some people, they believe that they came from, from the, the head family. I don't come from that. I was created by God. Yeah. I want you to understand in every human being there is something in you that no man can could not put in you. God put something in you that only God alone could have done it when he created Adam. Hallelujah. Adam was lifeless. Adam was just man. Dust. But the Bible said that God is blue breath into Adam, and Adam became a living being. Come on, church. You see that breath that God puts in you? That's God. God cannot die. I said, God cannot die. God lives forever. The portion of him that he puts in you, because God's intention was for you and I to live on planet Earth forever and forever. Amen. God did not create us for that. It's because of our greediness. Because of our unruliness. Our stubborn will. Our selfish desire. God gave us all that he knew that we needed, but we want more. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve back there with the food in the garden. Uh, they want more. That's what passed here. Don't fall. Man is going to live forever. The soul of man is going to come back. The Bible said after death comes the judgment. Come on. If when you die, it's all over. How will you be judged? Come on. How will you be judged? When you are going to be judged, you got to stand before a judge. Yes, yes. Jesus Christ will be the judge. And he knows how to bring us back. Because, listen to me, brothers and sisters, when we die, man is going to come back, but not as human being, not in the physical, but the spiritual man is going to live on forever. Amen. God is going to formulate you and I back again into the image that he wants us to be. We're going to 
face the penalty of repentance in John eternity. What next? What next? What next? The last thing, brothers and sisters, is will you are going to end up with all his finished. When God said it's over, it's either you spend eternity with me or you spend eternity in damnation. The question I want to ask is I do. Where do you want to spend your eternity? Where do you want to spend your eternity? Can you look, brothers and sisters? Many of us, we are afraid enough the material things you want so much. Much more than that, we can even. Yes, I, sometimes some people, you ever hear some people say, you're the truth, you're the truth, more than where you can swallow. <laughs> some of us, you know, when we see some things that we are wanting, we fill up the mouth that we can't do. See, so you can't get to swallow. And the other person, they can lick up and you hurry up to it, swallow it, and they need and they get more than you. But I, I want to say this lastly. I want you to then look at many of who you have known before. And some, they were wealthy. Wealthy, they have it. You could not even walk close by them. But where are they today? Have you ever gone to a procession? Have you gone to a funeral service or a Thanksgiving service? Have you ever gone to a cemetery and you see anybody come with a back book? Have you ever seen anybody come with a, a whole load of money and say we have to put it in the casket because this man has all so he must carry on? Hello, church. I heard one wealthy man of the Bible. When he had it all, and after a while he lose it all. But he was able to say, Naked I came, and naked shall I return. I took nothing in the sky, and I will take nothing. Amen. What you can take out of this life is life. Amen. And you can only have that life. Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to have eternal life in the place of peace and happiness, you got to turn it over to Jesus. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes when I make certain statements, some people vex. But the truth is the truth and nothing but the truth will be And if you live God, you're dead God, you're in this God. If you live good, you do good, and you die good, you're in the good. Victor have done his portion. His chapter has been closed. Like I said, I don't know where Victor is right now. I don't know. Maybe some of you will tell me you know. You might have had some last words with him. You might have heard him say, well, I turn it over to Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. I wish I could hear somebody say, in Jesus, Victor said, I give my life to Jesus. If he have done it, then my God don't care what you want to say. You don't care what you want to do, you can't change where he is. You can't divert from where he is right now. He's in a place of peace and happiness. If Victor have not surrendered his life to the Lord, no matter how much we love him, and how much we would desire that he have rest in place, a rest and peace with God, then listen to me, his book has been closed. What he has not done, before he died, he can't do it again. Somebody said, you better make right. Come and do it now. you got to do it while the blood's still running warm in your veins. Because when you're cold, you're really cold. Where will this be? After that, why? 
along this time of bereavement. You know, give me the hand, give me the shoulder, Talina. And I want to say to the community, even after the funeral has ended, sometimes the process of mourning still continues. And if you can still give them that love, that support, that shoulder to lean on, it will be highly appreciated by the, public, by the family members who do that use the care. Not only on the funeral day or just when it happened or on the night night, but I know that the family still need that shoulder to lean on, that shoulder to cry and someone to talk to, to just console them, a word of encouragement necessary. So I want to leave these two words with you and leave my love with you. And I was happy to have been here to celebrate the life of Victor with you. One love. Thank you.
thank you, Sidney. But whatever you can afford to give will truly be appreciated. The great thing is, oh Lord, my God.
yang sering kita lakukan pada orang itu. Gwendolyn, 
and Harris. <laughs> Nieces, nephews, family, friends, and the Kent estate family. May God, who granted peace and rest, give us all the strength to say that indeed he knows best. Sleep on for Victor. Sleep and take your rest. May his soul rest in peace and let perpetual light shine upon it. Thank you.
kingdom of God in this moment. And let them understand also that we be made it tonight for joy coming in the morning. Bind them with cause that cannot be broken. I put them in your hands just now. Like Jesus said, Father, these are given unto me. I place them in your hand. I place them in your hand right now. Watch over them. All of them put step in your word. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Thank you for the Lord for this family. And they continue about this part for life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 But sometimes we get pleased when we come up with them before the program begins. And then after that, we throw them away. Alright, so we just keep telling you quiet, no man, that we finish the one to our day. But I was saying, that the family of the late Victor, sorry, the son, is here. And because sometimes we throw it away, we don't see that they are expressing their gratitude to you for the support that you have given them during their time of bereavement. And they also want you to know that they truly, truly appreciate the love and comfort that you have given them. And they say, may God bless you. The instructions are, the last song is, what a friend do you have in Jesus? Please do not move the casket. Do not. Move. On the second stanza. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, you can't drive? Eh? No, don't go with the band. You don't go with the band? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, let me carry on. Yeah. I want to be can carry on. You know, don't say this again. Mm -hmm. I'll come by, dog. <laughs> Go with them, right now, man. No, man, I said, oh, you're the ass. I'm going to go with them, you know. Oh, you can't walk with them, don't you? I'm not sure, because it's pretty about much after my family member. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to go with your friend, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ah!